been a long time, so both teams really struggled uh, in all aspects. But of course, uh, now they got that under their uh, belts. And of course, uh, both teams expect a much better performance. You know, Ali, from a player's point of view, it must be tough without any practice games, having to go to your very it's first game. Very difficult. I mean, uh, you know, you, it's, it's not only the, the physical aspect of staying in shape, but also um, the physical aspect from getting your bearings back, getting your rhythm, timing, everything. You can clearly see for both squads. Um, I would say more so Phoenix was a little bit more steady as opposed to Northport just scattered all across the board. But then also the mental aspect of getting your mind back into the swing of things, that long stretch of uh, the PBA not existing and these players not being active, it can take its toll. It did take its toll. Not to mention the fact that even from the coaching standpoint, you actually don't know where your players are at because there was just zero practice games. Yes, uh, you know, the, the practice games are a, a great indication for the coaches of uh, where they're, how they're going to position and how they're going uh, to make their lineups, uh, particularly with the starting fives and, of course, uh, the supporting cast. Um, those tune-up games are very, very important. Right now, let's take a look at Phoenix LPG's last game. This is against Magnolia. They lost that one 80 to 73, and obviously the numbers that they have is not going to be enough to win against any team here in the league. Yeah, obviously. But, you know, I really thought that this game between uh, uh, Phoenix and Magnolia could have gone either way. It's just uh, that uh, Magnolia uh, stuck out towards the end where they started to make uh, the proper decisions uh, down the stretch, especially with, uh, with uh, the point production, also uh, defense, uh, unfortunately for Phoenix. Well, when we take a look at this matchup, it's going to be a battle of the stars once again. And a little bit later on, we're going to be talking about Matthew Wright, one of the main guys that this squad is obviously counting on. He's there on your screens right now. He is really the barometer for this squad, Ali. Uh, absolutely. You're talking about a, a seasoned veteran. He was actually one of the super rookies I considered. But, uh, you know, look, a steady game. He didn't really start to pick things up until that fourth quarter where he had about eight points in that fourth quarter. 20 points here, 7 for 20 field goal percentage. Not very high. We know that Matthew Wright's field goal percentage is much better than that. And we're going to switch over to the other side. And when we take a look at the Northport squad, obviously, you know, Vic Manuel is a very big addition to this Phoenix squad, though, before we switch over to the other side. Well, Vic Manuel is uh, what the doctor ordered as far as inside presence is concerned. It's there to uh, compliment guys like uh, uh, Chua and also uh, uh, Perkins. You know, um, other side of the block, what this guy brings is efficiency scoring out of the block. Keep in mind, in his Alaska days, he averaged over 20 points per game, doing it under 16 minutes per game coming off the bench. And so now a lot more will be expected for him here. Phoenix, of course, wants to be able to not just come up with a better showing that they had in the bubble, but they'd like to be able to get off to a good start here, this conference, to at least be able to further move up into that standings. How difficult is it going to be for these squads, Ali, playing without any fans once again? Well, you know, I think you just kind of get into that zone. I mean, you know, the situation is the situation. I, I would say it's very, very difficult um, because uh, <laughs> you feed off the crowd. Exactly. You know, especially the out-of-town games, which I, you know, I mean, personally, I love playing in the out-of-town games because the, the, the fans were so, so much uh, involved and invested. Here we go, Northport, Patang Piera. Let's take a look at their numbers. This is very, very poor as we take a look at 17 out of 81, 21% shooting alley. That's just not going to get it done. Yeah, like I said before, they were very scattered. They're all over the place. I mean, they did a pretty good job in the first part of the game. But then, uh, you know, Morocco's defense, actually Morocco's looked very, very uh, good over the last uh, game, um, the last couple of games. Um, but uh, they, their defense, their defense really uh, made it very difficult for Northport. Northport became more disorganized in their offense. And then, uh, of course, frustration started uh, to, uh, to creep in there. And then with that frustration, obviously, a lot of the outside shots that they normally could make, they didn't make it. So that just really made things turn from bad to worse. As we take a look at here, uh, the return of Robert Bollick. So obviously, they're saying he's back, but, you know, he's just like the other players trying to be able to really find his form. It's not just the, the physical aspect, aspect of uh, coming back from an injury but also the mental aspect. But it looks like uh, his mental aspect, the mental part of him, is it is back. It's just now a matter of getting enough repetitions, enough games under his belt, 
to finally get back to the Robert Bullock that we all know uh, and we all admire. Well, they do have a lot of new stars, but those stars that they expected to shine struggled. Talking about Malonzo, we've got Anthony, and also Lanete. Now, all under 10 points here, nine points for Jimmy Malonzo. Although I thought he played a pretty solid game, you know, doing so many other things, rebounding, playing good defense. Sean Anthony, we know what he's capable of doing. He's good for averaging 20 plus points per game on any given night. And when you take a look at those numbers, obviously Sean Anthony, one out of 10 field goals. Malonzo, three out of 12, and one out of six for Lanete. That's just not gonna cut it, definitely. No, absolutely not. And um, again, what I'm looking for more with Northport is a more balanced attack, uh, more of the team concept, not so much uh, not, not so much disorganized here. But again, we have to remind ourselves, especially for the fans out there, that it's been a long off season. Okay, not even an off season. It's just been away. Be, all these players being away from the game. Period. It's going to take some time for the quality for the competition to come back to. The way we expect. From your point of view, when you take a look at it, how many games or maybe how many weeks before they get to maybe not 100%, but at least to 80 to 85? Well, I think for some teams it's different. You know, when you think about Morocco, when you think about Rain or Shine, I thought that they looked pretty organized, they looked pretty solid. But when you look at Talking Tex, even though they won their game, Coach Chud Reyes said, I wasn't very pleased with the way they performed. They made a lot of bad decisions out there, uh, not as efficient. So right. it takes, it's going to take some time for uh, all the teams. Um, at their respective uh, speeds. There you see the numbers of Malonzo. Right now, let's take a look at Vic Manuel. We talked about him earlier, and this guy definitely came up with solid numbers. But again, a lot more is going to be expected from you here today, and I think for the rest of the conference as well. Well, I'm very excited for uh, Vic Manuel here. You know, uh, <laughs> this is a guy, again, he's, he could average 20 points per game, um, you know, in this uh, particular type of uh, system. Uh, uh, that he's in now. We're going to take a break. Coming back, we're going to have tip off. It's Northport up against Phoenix in just a little bit. Doubleheader features Phoenix Super LPG versus the North Fort Batapier. Let us now meet the starters first for Phoenix Super LPG. Point guard from Sambuanga, number 8, RR Garcia. Shooting guard from Ramos, Arlock, number 7, Matthew Royce. Small forward from Pangasinan, number 3, Jason Perkins. Power forward from Leyte, number 14, Nick Demusis. 
In at center from Bacola City, number 18, Justin Chua. Coaching Phoenix is Topex Robinson. And it's now time to meet the starters for the North Fort Batang. Yeah! Point guard from Ormok City, number 8, Robert Bolek. Shooting guard from Iloilo City, number 0, Polo Taha. Small forward from San Simon Pampanga, number 3, Jamie Malonzo. Power forward from Imo City, Cavite, number 7, Sydney Onwubere. And at center from Pancasina, number 21, Troy Wright. Coaching the bottom here is Pido Renzo. This game will be officiated by Peter Bala. Now we got the starters here for Phoenix. They're starting off with Wright, Garcia, Chua, Perkins, and Demusis. On the other side for North Fork, they have Taha, Bolling, Wright, Malonzo, and Onwubere. Once again, welcome back to our coverage of the 2021 Honda PBA Philippine Cup. Brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. This tip-off is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Anthony Sutai here together with Ali Peak. Ali, this is going to be an interesting matchup we got here this Wednesday afternoon. Well, I think the, the biggest thing for both sides is to uh, really uh, find their execution, find it early. Early foul there is going to be called on Onwubere. Stopping play. Ten seconds into this match. Perkins trying to bark out instructions here to his squad. Finally, they get it inside. Perkins playing point forward to right. In the corner, Garcia open. This fires. That was a good look there. It was actually pretty good execution. They just uh, failed to make the shot. Trying to get all the way home. We'll miss. Chua with the save, saves it to the wrong individual, and Bollock scores inside. Those were the types of moves that uh, I was able to watch in his first game. And uh, that's part of, um, you know, that's part of it. You know, just the way he was aggressive, the way he was attacking the basket. To me, it was like, okay, he's over that injury, and now it's just about trying to get those reputations in. You know, and more than anything else, Ali, you know, when you look at them coming off an injury like that, sometimes it becomes more mental than physical. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I've had quite a few my own uh, uh, injuries, uh, particularly knee injuries, and it's just never a good thing. You just don't feel as comfortable, as confident. Uh, but a lot of that uh, happens in, you know, getting over that happens uh, through physical therapy and just a lot of training. And then, then you got to get onto the basketball court and start getting those reps in, you know, whether it's shooting and just the movement, period, is on un uh makes a nice move to the basket. And it's now four to nothing here for Northport early on. Wanted to be able to make up for that dismal showing they had in their opening game. Perkins gets denied there by Reich. That's what I want to see more of. Troy Reich, six foot eight, six foot nine, making his presence felt early on. Uh, he is the center there, and uh, he, this is great help. He comes over, uh, helps Onyubere. I pronounced Onyubere's name improperly a few seconds ago. But good, good help defense. Got to go inside. The pass a little bit too high there for Wright. Couldn't handle it. But Couple were, of turnovers here for Phoenix early. But you were talking about, uh, you know, Anthony, how uh, how Matthew Wright is their spearhead as far as offense is concerned. He's also a leader off the floor in the locker room. A very, very uh, fiery uh, type of uh, player. But um, you're talking about a guy that has a lot of experience, not just here in the PBA, but also other leagues. Nice matchup there between Chua and Wright. Garcia not liking that call. Nice look at one of the rising stars we got in the league in Onubere. Here's Bolik once again. Go to the handoff. Trying to get inside. Chuo's there, just shut the door on him. Nice look there at Coach Pido Harencho. He was very disappointed with their last game. That's not going to beat the shot clock. 
Too bad, because Wright knocked that down. Yeah, it just took a little bit too much time there. You know, awareness, uh, aware, uh, being aware of uh, the shot clock and uh, what's going on around you. Garcia, past the timeline. Two minutes into this match. Right, looking for some space. There's a quick double up high. Perkins in the lane, kicks it out. The defense is solid here in the interior, but hitting from the outside is right. And Matthew Wright knocking down that jump shot, mid-range jump shot. Something I'm sure we're going to see more of as this game progresses. Wolik off the curl. Onu better attacks inside, gets denied there by Chua. And it hits Onu better on the way out. Justin Chua, you know, over the last couple of seasons, he's really come on as being one of the, 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 the premier big men in the PBA. I mean, that is one heck of a journey that uh, Justin Chua has gone through. But this is a nice block, a solid block here by Justin Chua. And he's playing with such confidence right now. He's one of those big men that can hit the outside shot. Here's Perkins. Finds Chua. Chua thought about it. We'll bring it in closer. Up and under move, doesn't work. One and done. Reich passes it out. Jumper's not going to work. Nobody there for defensive rebound for the boys in white. I thought they could have gotten a better offensive sequence there. They did play some pretty good defense earlier on. The news is, hey, Baby Hook's not going to work. Gets his miss. And here they're off and running. Bollick. Left open for three, short. So quick shots there. What I want to see Northport do is get back into their the flow of their offense, establish some sort of rhythm to get the better shot. But what we saw earlier, you know, Nick, uh, uh, Nick Demusis tried to take his man one-on-one. -on -one. He actually got his shot blocked by Jamie uh, Milonzo. And that's one of the things that Jamie Milonzo, the rookie, brings to this basketball team. Not just his scoring athletic ability, but his length his size in be, being able to defend. Right, short in that first free throw. Free throws are usually a given here for Matthew. Matthew. Well, you know, it's it's really tough. I mean, uh, you're talking about um, both of these teams, actually. I'm gonna go back to, I'm going to refer back to Magnolia and Phoenix in their very first game together. Uh, look, just an indication for all the fans that are listening out there. It was the first quarter with under four minutes left, and the score was only five to four. All right, so obviously it's going to take more time for a lot of these players, especially the key players, to really get things going. And people have to realize these guys were off the court for so long. I mean, and then they've had practices, and their practice has been on and off as well. It's been on and off. And, you know, it's just, just for some of the players that I've spoken to, like some of them just didn't know what to do with themselves anymore. Alonzo with a miss. So I don't know if this is what Coach Pido wants his uh, troops to do, just come out there. If they're open, go ahead and uh, shoot it, which you are supposed to do. But I want to see more offense. I want to see them work the offense a little bit more. But it's not the new kind of basketball that we're watching right now, Ali. A Everybody. Of, a lot of screens. Five seconds into the shot clock, they're hoisting exactly, shots yes. already. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We've seen it from uh, the Phoenix Suns and also uh, also the Milwaukee Bucks. It seems like that's the new way of, you know, the way these kids play the game already. Chua, he can hit that. He's going to miss fire. Yeah, good, ex with the rebound. good execution, but just uh, not being able to knock down the shot yet. Here's Bolek looking for some space. Very quickly attacks. Out to Taha. Taha's going to get fouled. That might be the second on Garcia. They're going to give it to Matthew Wright. That's going to be his first. Well, on to there, calling out the play. That's going to bring us here to our first timeout. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA.
We'd like to welcome everybody back here to the Inanis Sports Arena in Pasig. TV action coming your way as Northport battles Phoenix. Very low scoring affair here, Ali. Just like what you were alluding to yeah. in the earlier matchups that you've had so far here at this conference. I just think that it's, it has to be expected from some of the teams. Um, but again, you know, we're talking about the last time these guys have played, the last time the PBA has been active was from the, the PBA bubble. So these guys are going to have to play themselves back into their form, their respective forms, as this season goes on. Bolik, nice pass and cut there by Taha. Three point play in the offing. And what I'm seeing so far by Northport, much better decisions, especially when they take their time into the offense. It was a nice pass there by Robert Bolek to a cutting Paulo Taha. And those are the type of looks that they have to look for in order to really get uh, their offense going. 6-3 is our tally. Taha knocks down that free throw, increasing the lead here of Northport. Now to four. Defensive look there for Coach Pido. R.R. Garcia there being very active. They get it inside the two. Out of the Muses. Taking that three. We go to the main man right. Perkins now explodes to the basket, kicks it out. Nice rotation of the ball. Garcia overshoots. Power dribble. The Muses gets blocked once again. You like the fact that though, he's taking it strong to the basket. Uh, he is taking very strong to the basket. I would consider him more of a stretch four. He is about six foot four, six foot five, nice frame. He does try to challenge uh, Malonzo again and then he gets a shot blocked again. Right. Steps into that one. Backs it home. That was a nice up and under move by Matthew Wright. Scoring load being carried here by Matthew Wright early. Bollick kicks it out. They swing it. One move better for three, no. To another rebound. Garcia says, let's settle things down. Waiting for the rest of the squad. Perkins from the outside. What about that three, gave it up. We'll get it here. There you can see a lot of their shots. It seems like the timing's just off. It's way off. I mean, I don't think Perkins uh, meant to take that shot as soon as he did. Looked like he uh, lost his footing in the process, but Robert Bullock coming out pretty good so far in this first quarter. And for somebody who actually didn't play the whole of last season as well. We're talking about over 600 days that Robert Bullock has missed a PBA game. And I have to say, you know, that's a, first of all, that's a nice shot. Again, nice up and under move by uh, Matthew Wright. But then for Robert Bullock, I'm very impressed. Um, for what he's been able to do. I mean, 11 points, we all know that uh, Robert Bullock uh, is much more capable than that, but again, I'm gonna go back to uh, the way he was moving out there. Right. Um, he looked like he was aggressive, he looked like he trusted that knee, and those are all good things. And I guess you have to put everything in its proper perspective because he's coming off an injury and he's looking like he's in better shape than some of the other guys. Actually, I was going to say that. He looked, he looked <laughs> a lot better than some of the guys that were out there, some of his teammates for that uh, matter. I mean, again, 11 points, still double figures. Northport des desperately wants to be able to get a victory. They are 0-1, but they've actually lost seven straight games, Ali, moving, looking at the bubble. Yeah, they had a pretty rough bubble. Uh, to say the least. But uh, just taking a look at this defense that, again, this is what I like about Jamie Malonzo. All right, let's forget about the scoring for now. He did have nine points in his debut game. Um, but being able to guard other positions, he can guard the wing, but guess what? He was guarding Jason Perkins there. He did, he did draw the foul. He actually uh, committed a foul. But still, this is the extended part of the defense of what uh, Coach Pido can use, can utilize from his personnel. Good numbers and minutes here so far put up by R.R. Garcia as Perkins still on the line. 
Misses that first, makes the second. Brings his team to within two. 8-6 is our tally. 6-19 remaining here in quarter number one. Some new recruits have come in from both these squads. Taha still in the backcourt together with Bolling. Getting right up together with Chua. Take your pick. They're going to give it to Chua. I actually like that move by uh, Pablo Taha. He's trying to uh, give the Phoenix defense a little more to think about. You know, he's been aggressive so far in this first quarter. And you know, for me, um, just my evaluation of him over the years, even when he was with the Nebra, I always thought that uh, there's a lot of potential for this kid. Pasquale's checking in, replacing Chua. Now some of the shock troopers coming in here for the respective squads. I think that Pasquale is also a very good pickup as far as the big man position is concerned for the Phoenix. Uh, I wanted to say Fuel Masters, but they go by a different name now. Yep, they're now Phoenix LPG. LPG, there we go. Go to Perkins. I go inside Pasquale. Finds Perkins. Perkins gets denied. Great defense there. Again, Troy manning the middle. Northport was in the 2-3 zone that time. Going all the way through. That's what big man Will brings. Just another, uh, another um, extension of the big man rotation. Do you like the fact that they have him coming off the bench? Well, I think that's where he's most effective. He's been like that his entire career. Because he can be a starting he, big he man. Can, he can actually can. He actually can. But you know, there's just certain players that are like that. Jimmy Malonzo gets on the scoreboard. Nice move. You know, spin, spin uh, to his left, and then fully extending over his defender. Again, Northport in that 2-3 zone. It seems to be working so far. Trying to move that ball around, right for three, short. Crashing the boards is Pasquale. He's going to lose it, though. And Northport's doing all the right things, Anthony. They're playing really good defense. They look like a more tight-knit group in this first quarter and compared to the entire game in their debut. Well, it resets. Now attacks. Perfect setup. Ferrer for three. In and out. Right to the power rebound. Looked like Troy Reich, the rookie, and Vic Manuel kind of got entangled. Got tangled up, excuse me. Here we might see it here in this angle. It's a nice move there on Jason Perkins. Again, the length of this young man, and the athletic ability. Sort of like a Scottie Pippen type body. And you can see the hang time he has yes. as well. Definitely. And we're going to see a lot of highlights from this guy. I mean, we, saw, we saw a highlight uh, from him in his very first game. Now you've done. Still a four-point lead here enjoyed by Northport. As they approach the four-minute mark of quarter number one. Manuel asking for it. Oh, that's a nice pass. Bounce pass inside. You know, in fact, it didn't look like Pasquale was really waiting for that pass. And he just dropped in his lap. I agree. I don't think he really expected it, but it was right there. That was a nice bullet bounce pass into the paint, and Pasquale was able to finish that. That's a nice big-to-big -big, uh, connection. Basket and one here. Pasquale looking to complete the three-point play. Bring his team to within one. A little bit too strong on that free throw. Malonzo with the rebound. A little bit of pressure from Phoenix in the backcourt. They get it past the timeline. Taha for three. No. Three-point shot has not been kind to both these squads early on. Stopping, popping, and hitting. And that's what this rookie can bring to the Phoenix squad. Talk about Melesho. Melesho looks hungry. I mean, he just looks like one of those rookies that's just really determined to show his worth. That was a nice pull-up jump shot. Another thing that has come back and is sort of 
been a part of basketball over the last what over the last couple of months has been the mid-range jump shot. We've seen it in the NBA playoffs time and time again. Ferrer finally hits a three. So what I like about Northport's offense is they're taking their time. They're not taking any rush shots like they, they were doing in the first few minutes of this first quarter. Manuel had a bully his way inside. That's a little bit too strong. And a foul will be called there on that attempted steal. That's a poor foul because their team is in the penalty. So free throws coming up here. That was a nice pass there from Robert Bolick. A nice assist to Kevin Ferrer over there in the corner. We've been seeing Robert Bolick make those type of decisions so far in this first quarter. Attacking, penetrating, drawing the defense in, then picking it out to his shooters. First free throw, not going to drop. We've also seen very disappointing free throw shooting from both these squads. Actually, all throughout the league, really. And again, these are growing pains. Players trying to get back their sea legs. Another thing I wanted to add as well, uh, Anthony, is you, know, you can train in the offseason. You can train, you can, but nothing compares to the actual game. It's just a different, uh, just a different feeling. Altogether. And a different speed. A different speed, yeah. When you have someone hanging on you, trying to prevent you impeding your way from getting to whatever position you're trying to get to. That takes a lot out of you as well. That's a pass. They go right back. Balanza hits. Balanza. Former Letron Knight champion. Uh, NCAA champion. A few seasons back. But uh, knocking down that three-point shot. Here's Manuel once again. Trying to do bully ball. Harencha doesn't like the call. We got two minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in the first period. You've been playing at a good pace. It's 18 to 12, Northport on top over Phoenix. Take a look at Robert Bollick here. His numbers up against Miralco, you mentioned it. Decent, 11 points, nine rebounds, three assists. The problem is, look at this, 21.1% field goal shooting. That's why they fell short. I think that's all gonna come back with time. I've been saying this, you know, I sound like a broken record, Anthony saying this, but I can't stress it enough. You know, it, it really makes a difference. Basketball is not a faucet, people, where you could just turn off and then turn back on and expect to perform the same way you've been performing. Right now, we take a look at the team standings, the Bralco Bolts and Raynor Shine with the early lead here at this conference, picking up two quick wins. Yeah, absolutely. And those two teams in their debut, Anthony, look really good. They look well organized. They look like they've been playing for quite some time. I wouldn't say that they look like at peak form, but uh, they look a lot better than many of the teams that have been performing so far. But just to take a look at some of the stats here, Phoenix, their field goal shooting right now is 5 for 19. On the other side, Northport, 6 for 14. So, I mean, if you were to add everything up, not great shooting so far on the part of both squads, but a lot better in comparison to their first games. More so Northport, because I thought Northport's shooting percentage was very, very bad um, in their very first game. Bolek hits the deck really hard. Quickly picks himself up. But again, another poor foul because that's going to send their opponent to the free throw line once again.
207 remaining. Bolik on the line for two more free throws. Well, Ali, you got a report here on Sean Anthony, and he's got a posterior ankle impingement, and so we're not going to be able to see him today. He got a PRP shot, and hopefully in the next couple of games, we should be seeing him back in action. Well, it's just unfortunate that Sean Anthony can't join his team today. I know that kills him a lot. You know, just I played with him, and I know how hard the guy works. But because of that hard work, Anthony, I know he's going to be back in, in no time. But um, I think it's more of just a safety measure just to make sure that he does come back. When, you, when you're coming back, unless it's the playoffs or the finals, you want to make sure that uh, you're 100%. The staff, the coaching staff, the trainers want to make sure that that player, that key player, especially Sean F, comes back at full, at full uh, health. They're looking at the bigger picture, obviously, because there yes. are bigger games ahead. You know what's really interesting about this? As we talk about Northport, uh, I keep forgetting that that Greg Slaughter is a part of this team. And so that's another thing to look forward to if you're a Northport fan, that Greg Slaughter is going to return to action, hopefully sooner than later. Well, a pass like that and a shot like that might not happen with Greg Slaughter inside. Absolutely. You know, Jansen Rios has been one of the energy guys in the PBA. There's no, uh, no, there's no question on my part uh, that... Uh, it's Vic Manuel, it was a nice move. And he looked at Onu Berry saying, you really wanted to try to stop me? That's a big mistake. And this is the value of a big that likes to run the floor, especially tra uh, trailing the break here. We take a look at this, uh, this nice little backdoor play. Uh, uh, Rios, excuse me, sneaking behind the defense uh, from that baseline inbounds play by Phoenix. You know, a lot of the fans are so disappointed. They've been dying to see Greg Slaughter back in action. But the word is they wanted to make sure that he was really in tip-top shape before they actually thrust him into action. Well, the good thing is it's going to happen sooner. Sooner than later, I would say. One of better, short of that three. Here's Azul. Milesho. They're being very patient. Misfiring there is the big man, Manuel. Under a minute remaining here in the first period. Excellent pass. Nice finish. That's a nice uh, pass there by Balanza to... That's Faundo. Faundo. Excuse me, Faundo. Hazul launches. Misses. Onu Berra with the rebound. Will they go for a two for one? Nice spin. Just short. Now Malesh says, let's set things up. Nice find. A little bit too strong on that three. Long rebound. Stays here with Phoenix. They're still down by four, trying to cut this deficit down right before the break. Difference of about three seconds, shot clock, game clock. Milesho, a little bit too strong on that one. This Phoenix is really having a difficult time this first quarter, trying to put the ball into the basket. But also, you got to give credit to the Northport defense. That might be a block credited here to Vic Manuel. Stopping the Ligas. And the first 12 minutes of action here between Northport, Bottom Clare, and Phoenix Super LBG in the books. It's 22 18, Northport on top.
take a look at the tournament format here. Single round robin eliminations. Well, the teams will just play each other once, which is actually 11 games per team. And then after that, the top eight teams make it to the next phase of competition with teams one and four, supposedly with a twice to beat advantage. Well, that's why it's so important. Even though we're talking about, uh, you know, these guys trying to get their bearings back, each and every single team in the PBA, uh, you're talking about a single round rob. They have to get their act together and they got, they got to do it quick. That's a tough ask, Ali. It, it is, it <laughs> is, but <laughs> that's the situation there. But um, I just want to run off some stats real quick. Rebounding is is uh, pretty much even right now. 16 rebounds for Phoenix, 16 rebounds for North Florida. Uh, but I'm just going to go back to the shooting percentage. Uh, field goal percentage, 28% for Phoenix. They've been struggling. Northport trying to find their bearings as well, 36%. Steel, and efficient in the open court. Melesho, no. Nice rebound there by Ferrer. Man, Melesho is not afraid to put it up. Telling you. Not playing like a rookie. Bond is going to bring it out. Ferrer calling out the play. Early minutes of quarter number two. Ferrer for three. Yes. <laughs> his three-point shooting. He's finding his range so far in this first half. Doc drained the three-point shot in the corner set up by uh, Robert Bolick in the first quarter. That's going to be a traveling violation for sure. No seven-point lead enjoyed here by Northport. Just goes ahead and, and uh, everyone clears out in that case scenario, understanding that there was a mismatch there. Able to drain the three point shot. Venetia hounding Balanza there. And that's why Balanza turned it over. Reich wasn't expecting to be given the pass that far out. And right now, this uh, Northport team has to stay focused here, try to make the right decisions. It's a little bit of a miscommunication. Well, he's going to check back in. That's more firepower here for Northport. Same here for Phoenix because they have right back in action. Balanza fouled right as he took that three. That's going to mean three free throws here for Matthew. <laughs> you see Coach Bidou saying, that's exactly what my player did. I'd like to take a look at it again here. Balanza challenges the shot. It's kind of say the best angle there. Did he make contact with the arm of it Matthew it on didn't, the release? It didn't look like the arm, but more so uh, the lower extremities, more of the leg, possibly the hip. But then again, you're talking about a veteran, one of the better players, one of the top players here in the league, going up against uh, Balanza. <laughs> So he's going to get the call he's, seven he's days of the week. He's definitely going to get the call. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. <laughs> and twice on Sundays. So. Yes. <laughs> but uh, will be replaced here. Go ahead. But just the three-point shooting has, you know, for for Matthew Wright and Phoenix, Fuel Masters uh, hasn't been, I mean, there's no percentage. Uh, just they're, they're shooting 0% right now from the three-point range. And again, we know that Phoenix is fully capable of having really good shooting nights from that area. Ferrer looking for another three. A little bit too strong that time. Right with the rebound. Weaving all the way through, overshoots. All by his lonesome, Hazul. A little bit too strong, the tap. It's controlled here by Northport. Ran out to their five point lead. Balling to the wing, gets it right back. Still a lot of time in their shot clock. Here comes Onwubere inside, gets denied. It looked like he lost his footing there on his way to the basket. But a good help side defense by Muyan. Here comes Larry. Get that weak stuff out of here. Now Larry reminds me so much 
from uh, Bo Belga. He's kind of have the same type of uh, prototype physiques. Second coming? Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, they have very similar skill sets. Both about six foot six. And uh, Kevin Ferrer really finding his uh, mark here in the first half. Northport up by seven once again. All by his lonesome. We're going to have an, another violation. It's going to be another turnover here for Phoenix. You know, he was wide open. Jensen Reels is wide open. He should have just went ahead and took that shot. But uh, we're seeing a lot of great action by Northport, particularly because of Robert Bolick. Aside from his scoring, that's what he brings, uh, setting his teammates up, and he set up Kevin Ferrer right there. Taha back in action. He started his ball game. Ferrer goes to the basket. Will miss fire. Reich inside, yes. That's when you that's what you want to see the big man do. You know, Troy Reich, again, six foot eight, six foot nine, making his presence felt. First on the defensive side with block shots, but now cleaning up for Northport. Watch it here once again. Reich showcasing his strength. Knocks that one through. Extending the lead here of Northport Batangpierre. This time out is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Sports Arena here in Pasig as we bring to you our ongoing coverage of the 2021 Honda PBA Philippine Cup brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Anthony Sutai here together with Ali Peak. Glad to be bringing you this basketball action this Wednesday afternoon. Right now, Robert Bullock has three assists and I really believe that he could have had a lot more going into the second quarter had his teammates were able to knock down some certain shots because I'm saying that because he set them up so well. He's been breaking down the defense. Yes. Garcia has checked back in. Shot clock is now at three. That's going to be the shot clock, but in and out. Look at Bolling, just controlling the tempo here. And then he speeds it up. Taha finds a seam. That might be two free throws here. Sort of motion to Robert Bolick, Pablo Taha, um, after he made that move to the basket. Now, it looked as if that wasn't exactly what they were trying to run. They were looking for something a little bit more, but Paulo Taha found the opening. He saw the crack in the defense and went ahead and took advantage of it. This time it worked in his favor because he's at the charity stripe. Northport 30, Phoenix 20. This 10-point lead is the biggest for Northport here in this battle. But I will say this, Phoenix is having a very difficult time this first half putting the ball in the basket. You know, and to take it a step further, they, they've actually gotten pretty good looks. They just can't put the ball in the basket. Bush going to be called Darren Perkins on on Mubere. <laughs> Chua checks back in, in place of Larry Muyang. Malonzo has checked in once again here for Northport. So even more athleticism on the floor right now. Taha. This essentially is the starting five for Northport. Chopper's gonna work for Onyubere. Onyubere is one of those guys who also, you know, like 
uh, Nick Demusis has that size, about six foot four. Um, big body can actually play two positions out there. He can play the small forward, Anthony, but he can also play that stretch four position. That time, he posted up his man for the jump shot. And we're going to see a little bit more of that as the course of the conference <laughs> goes through. And ball, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> he just couldn't well, he, pick up the rebound. He, he just, and he was all by his lonesome. I, the one thing I noticed about him early on, when he was at San Beda, I was coaching against him. I was over at College of St. Benil. Not just his leadership and his skill set, but his intensity and his, the expectations of himself. Very impressive for a young player. Rank for three. And yes. And Anthony, that's what I was looking for. Outside of the block shots, outside of the offensive rebounds and putbacks, that is his, that's his bread and butter right there, knocking down those three-point shots. It's a 15-point advantage enjoyed here by Northport. Another miss here from Phoenix. Chua pushes his way through. There have been They're more just, than a couple of shots that were halfway down and out. They had three opportunities there, and like I said, Jamie Malonzo running the break and displaying his athletic ability with the, the two-hand dunk. Now a 17-point lead. Perkins for three. Overshoots. Save. What an effort there from Garcia. Chua takes it in himself. A little bit too strong. Another easy two for Taha. So two fast break points. That's four points to extend the lead 39 to 20. Anthony, but the one thing about Phoenix is they're just having a tough time putting the ball in the basket, which results in these types of plays here. Robert Bullock leading the break, and then Jamie Malonzo, what we've all been waiting for, the two-handed jam. Trying to run away with it here is the Northport Patam Pierre. As we have another timeout, this time I'm brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. What a blast here put together by Northport. As they've erected this 19-point lead here. And what I've said, even in the first game, Anthony, uh, when they were really struggling, is that this is a team that can be very, very dangerous. Uh, yes, they didn't have a very good showing in the PBA bubble, but let's remember what their conference or their conferences looked like in the season before. Very, very impressive. Obviously, there have been changes in personnel, but you still have the same coaching staff there. Pito, very, very good coach. He knows how to get what he needs out of his players. And what we're seeing now is the potential of Northport. Garcia thought about it. Finds Chua. Gives it back. RR for three. No. So many shots, Ali. Just about halfway down and just rimmed out. What I'm concerned about here with Phoenix is that uh, they don't look like, uh, in, at, in this case scenario, in this point in time, they don't look like they're really trusting one another. They're sort of trying to take matters into their own hand, hands, excuse me, instead of just trying to reapply and keep on reapplying the team game. Here's Bolik once again. He's quarterback so well, launches a three, short that time. Right. Takes matters into his own hands, overshoots. Manuel, yes. Finally, the bleeding stops with Vic Manuel being able to clean up uh, Matthew Wright's miss. But you know, I'm going to go back to uh, Robert Bullock initiating the offense and what he's been able to do. Yeah, okay, the scoring is not so impressive right now, but you see his effectiveness, uh, especially when it comes to his teammates, Jamie Malonzo knocking down the jump shot. Um, by just being out there. It's another 19-point edge. Sneaking in that shot. It's not going to drop, though, but two free throws coming up here for the big man, Vic Manuel. That's my move. Yes, That's my sir. baseline move right there. Nice move. We see Jamie Malonzo's versatility. Um, I talked about how he can play post defense on a natural power forward. This case scenario, on the offensive end, he initiates the offense 
pretty much bringing the ball up opposite Robert Bullock. Fonda's going to check back in. Young big man here for Northport. Seeing extended minutes here, obviously, with the absence of Greg Slaughter. Greg's fans are just dying to see him back in action. There was so much hype about how he prepared for this coming season. Yeah, developing a three-point shot. So I want to see some of that. Exactly. In fact, I thought we were going to see some of that here today. But the coaching staff elected to keep him off. At least one more game. Under five minutes to be played here. You got a good one. Philippines' chances of getting its first ever gold medal is stronger than ever. Share the love for Team Philippines as we count down to Tokyo 2020. Watch the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 from July 23rd to August 8th on Signal TV5, One Sports, One Sports Plus, Signal Play, PLDT, and Smart. Hashtag See Us Stronger. Any particular port, sports you want to see? Any particular events you want to see in the Well, a lot Olympics, of events. Yeah. I mean, first of all, obviously the basketball, basketball competition there. It's going to be very interesting to see just how Team USA performs. I'm not even talking about them getting I'll, the gold I'll medal. Be, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of Americans need to be concerned here. <laughs> well, first how they're of all, going to do. they only have eight players that flew because Zach Levine actually That's right. wasn't yeah. on the plane. And then the three players who played in the finals are still about to be planning in in about 24 hours. Very interesting to see what happens there. We'll see. So many games, obviously, with athletics, swimming competitions, no Michael Phelps anymore. So we're looking for the new stars in the sport of swimming. With the Philippines, with 19 of our athletes, we're hoping that we finally get our very first gold medal. Wouldn't that be a treat? That would be awesome. I also and whoever gets that's going to go home with 30 million bucks. Wow. Wow. In incentives, can you imagine? That, hey, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Big man, well, the muscle man making a nice move to the basket earlier on. And we'd like to thank, of course, MVP, who's contributing 10 million of that 30 million bond, and even RSA and the San Miguel group throwing in another 10 million together with the Philippine Sports Commission giving 10. So that's 30 million. And still, I heard more to come. Yeah, you know, that's great. I mean, both uh, both companies like that coming together. As Jamie Milanzo actually had the clear path to the basket, but he took a hard one. This could have been a dunk here, but, uh, you know, that's a hard welcome foul <laughs> by uh, the muscle man, Dick Manuel. No, you're not going to get any dunks here, man. Welcome to the PBA. Dick Manuel style. He's still feeling the effects of that hit. He was like, I wasn't a running back. <laughs> I, mean, I remember this is not American football. I remember the first time I played against Inebra. I remember. I, I'm sure you remember that. That was way back. But uh, luckily, I didn't get hit like that. But who uh, I, I, every time I attacked the basket, I was expecting a hit. It wasn't until the second time I played against Inebra that I took all the hits. <laughs> I think Marlo Kino got me real good on the head. No, I was seeing stars, times. no, Benny Chang. Benny Chang. <laughs> let's, let's go back here. Terry Saldana. <laughs> I know I'm missing one more. 
There's one more in that area. So Noli didn't get you any? Noli, no, Noli and I, we were drinking buddies. Okay, okay. So and we, we had an understanding, I think. <laughs> Oh, the rest of it. Wilmer Ong. Wilmer Ong. There we go. So those three guys, man. Der Terry Saldana, Wilmer Ong, and Benny Chang. Of course, Benny Chang, um, you know, I love what he's doing right now. And, uh, hats off to all three of those guys. Well, some of them are listening. Thank you very much. And you guys, always a part of the PBA. Together with my partner, Ali Peak here. But there, on will better finish that. And now increasing the lead of Northport once again. Trying to answer back, Vic Manuel. Lowers his shoulder. So far, it's really just been Big Manuel and a little bit of Matthew Wright as far as the offensive side goes for Phoenix. But we've see, we're seeing a lot of fast break points uh, by Northport, and that's because of their defense. Perfect setup on Wupere. Short, though. That goes back to the point that you've been making. So many setups perfectly done by Robert Volick. His teammates just not knocking them down. They look like they have the more balanced attack. Actually, they do have the more balanced attack in this first half. Phoenix, a little all over the place right now. I'm gonna stay here. Two minutes, 28 seconds remaining. Coach Bidol came out and gave Onu Berry an earful. But he was free. I mean, that was a shot that he had to take. Bolik set him up perfectly. There's Sean Anthony on your screens. Unfortunately, we're not going to see him in action once again. If you're just joining our coverage, the report we got from Sidney Talabis, their PT, he said he had a PRP shot, which is an injection for a posterior ankle impingement. So hopefully, we'll see him back in the next couple of games. Doesn't seem like they're missing him today, though. No, they, this is, well, first of all, yeah, you're absolutely right about that, Anthony. Um, I think they needed to respond. Um, and I think that Coach Pido really got on them. He was upset during the game. So you know that in the locker room, it wasn't too pretty. I'm sure that this is all they thought about over the last couple of days in preparation for this Phoenix team. But Phoenix, I was saying earlier, they're the ones that look sporadic. They're the ones that look like they're taking rush shots. Uh, unbalanced, no timing, no rhythm type shots, whereas Northport, much more balanced. Here's Bolik once again. Active hands. But I was talking about how Northport is getting out in transition because of their defense causing turnovers. They have seven fast break points in this first half. Back to Bolik once again. Set up. Ferrer kicks it out. On will bet it for three. Short. Two open shots missed there by Sydney. Extra pass. Why not go inside to the muscle man? In and out again. That's got to be frustrating there for the muscle man. That's a shot that he would normally make. But again, you got to give credit to the Northport defense, understanding that that's the muscle man underneath the basket. And his percentage is pretty high. Two guys came to help. And Bullock reading the defense and exploiting that opening and attacking and scoring. Well, he realizes there's no shot blocking inside right now. I'm going to take it in strong. Nice cut. And Matthew Wright, being very active, even without the basketball, will head to the line for two shots. Foul's going to be given to Ferrer. Reich was wondering where the foul was. Well, no contact given to you now. Ferrer is wondering, why me? Well, officially the foul will be on him. Matthew knocks down the first. No problem with the second as well. Cuts the lead down to 16. Still a mountain to climb here for Phoenix. Bolik trying to make it real difficult. Oh, wow. Nice rip. Melesha gets away. By the rookie. Two players, formerly of De La Salle University. Of course, Bolik did transfer to the NCAA. Better thought about it. They're going to use a little bit more of a shot clock. 
Well, he's got to make his move. Shot clock down to three. Sets up Reich. Reich will miss and easy put back there. Offensive rebound by Kevin Ferrer. So he's knocking down three point shots. And now he's cleaning up underneath the basket. Under 40 seconds here in half number one. It'll be too strong. Those 50 50 balls being picked up here always by Northport. I mean, what was crazy about that is that we saw those uh, 50 50 balls, those offensive rebounds, those long rebounds uh, being taken care of by Phoenix, and then their attempts to try to get the ball in the basket failed again. Ferrer, left open hits. Man. And Ferrer's feeling it. This first half has been really good for him so far. And that might be an inbound beneath the basket here of Northport. Nobody touched that. So they're going to have 12 seconds to be able to increase this 19-point lead of theirs. Bollock says, let me handle this one. Let me create. Nice, nice handoff, yes. And our officials are going to say, time is over. First half is done. Pretty good showing for both these squads, but definitely a better showing for Northport here. Ferrer led the charge here, knocking down that three. And then Onwo Bere finishes on the break. Even more action here as Malonzo slams it through. Northport has got out and ran, and they have ran roughshod here over Phoenix Super LPG in the first two quarters of play. 50 for Northport, 31 for Phoenix Super LPG. Sensing that he will miss, went after his shot. Look at that. Nobody blocked him off. Nagtuloy tuloy ngayon siya for that putla. Back over to Popoy. Kanina pa inaharap ni Jason yun. Popong din blocked by Ganuelas. A two-handed block by Matt. Inuha lang, RG. Grabe yun. Nagulat ako ron. Fourth action. There you go. For the guy who can leap out of here. And you just throw it up. If you see Jamie Malonzo running beside you or in front of you, you throw it up. Coaches made an adjustment. Oh, 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 oh. Kelly Williams with a bustos alley you jam. Me kasama pang foul. Ang dami kong pinasunod. The athleticism of Kelly Williams was in full display. Welcome back to the PBA Machine Gun Kelly. Here at the United Sports Arena here in Pasig, as we find Northport up 50 to 31 over Phoenix Super LPG. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here of this match. It is a slow start for both these squads, but slowly but surely, we have Northport 
pulling away. Well, yeah, a lot of it had to do with uh, just uh, their execution, their pace, patience, timing, and more of a balanced attack as opposed to Phoenix's side. Also, defensively, uh, Northport did a pretty good job. Take a look at the action here in the second quarter. This is where Northport really started to pour it on. Ferrer hitting from the outside, and that opened things up for some of the guys inside the paint. Uh, a lot of that because of that man right there, Robert Bolick, who was, in this case scenario, leading the break for that two-handed jam by Jamie Malonzo, the rookie. Um, and again, a lot of his decision makings leading to wide open shots, and again, leading the fast break, this time to Onyubere. Right now, let's take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Well, you take a look at the field goal percentage, that says a lot. Phoenix only 22%, Northport 44%, three point field goal percentage 25% for Northport, 0% for Phoenix, and of course, the assist category. Northport edges out Phoenix in double figures, 11 assists dished out. Uh, and then second chance points go to in, go to the favor of Northport six as opposed to Phoenix's four. That's very, very surprising. Zero out of 15 for the Phoenix Super LPG Fuel Masters, our team that of course boasts of one of the best shooters that we have in the league in Matthew Wright. Yeah, absolutely. You, you can still see that for Matthew Wright, it's, it's still taking some time to get his bearings back. Keep in mind, he did have eight points down the stretch in that fourth quarter in the very first game. So we might see that type of explosion possibly for Matthew Wright in the third and fourth quarter. What Northport has to be concerned about here is the run and reorganization from Coach Topex Robinson and his troops uh, for Phoenix in the start of the third quarter. Runs are always made by the team that's down in the start of the second half. You can see here the top scores for both these squads and well for Northport it's really very even distribution. Yes, absolutely. You look at that. 13 points for Kevin Pereira, who, you know, you wouldn't expect to, to get off so quickly, but a lot of that again has to do with Mr. Robert Bullock. Um, seven points for Robert Bullock in that first half, eight points for Paulo Taha, six for Jamie Molanzo, and six for on Ubere. Let's see the adjustments both these squads are going to be able to make here as these take a look at Greg Slaughter, who is dying to get back in action here in the PBA. We did not see him in the bubble. And so essentially, he's been out for more than a year. Well, you know, the one thing that you have to be concerned about here is your legs. You may be in good shape. You may be able to knock down your shots, especially in practice type situations, training type situations. But when you're running up and down the court like that, one of the first things that's gonna go, actually the first thing that does go, is your, the power in your legs, the strength in your legs, the balance, and having what they say, having your legs up under you, that starts to go and that changes everything. That changes all your dynamics. Some like to call them their sea legs. Once you have it under you, then you're good to go. That takes a while. Let's see what happens in the next couple of games when we see the return of Greg Slaughter. Right now, he's here just trying to cheer on his squad. And they're doing quite well, despite the fact that he's not here. Welcome back to the 2021 Honda PBA Philippine Cup, brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Good quarter action. Red's going to pick that one up. Nice setup. Hazul for three. No, they're now 0 for 16, Ali. Yeah, just really, really, uh, well, just really bad from three-point range right now. But Big Manuel being able to score on that second chance opportunity. Why? Because of the 50-50 ball. So if there's something that's going to keep Phoenix into this game, uh-oh. Uh -oh. it looks like he got hurt there. But just going back to Phoenix, if Phoenix is going to get back into this game, it's going to be because of those hustle plays. And then just being more organized in their offensive attack. It'll be nice to be able to see that again. Everything happened so quickly. That was one of those bang, bang plays. And then we better there talking to the official saying, I got hit and I got hit bad. We didn't get a chance to see what happened. We were so focused on Manuel going back down, strutting after hitting another basket. Manuel leads all scorers now with 15 points. Here we go. 
and Wright just ran into him. What I don't understand is why didn't on you better just dribble the ball up yeah. past half court, or maybe he did use his dribble already. Fifty thirty-three is our tally here. Early goings of the third period. Melesha starting out for his squad here. Get a solid showing in the time that he had in the court in the first half. Well, he knocked down a jump shot, and then he had a nice steal, a nice defensive play on Robert Bullock for two points on the other end. Here's Bullock going to the basket, moving without the basketball. On Mubera scores once again, and another assist for Robert. And that's what you have to do if you're, if you're playing with Robert Bullock. All you got to do is cut to the basket. He'll find you. Here's Manuel once again, kicks it out. They swing the ball, lands in the hands of Perkins. Perkins fading away, short. Again, a shot that Jason Perkins would normally make. Bolik once again, finds a seam. That time, straight to the hands of Wright. Wright gets it right back and lays it up with the left hand. It's a nice shot too. You know, off the opposite leg with the left hand. Back to Bowling. He's quarterback so well for his squad here. Sydney thought about it, then he should have just taken that shot. Yeah, this is the second time that Sydney's made some uh, some some uh, plays that don't work in the, the, the part of Northport's favor. But we see that shot there. We see so much of that in this generation of basketball players, being able to switch hands using the same leg. The game has changed, huh, Ali? A lot has changed. A lot <laughs> has changed. Like, I, I mean, I even question, I mean, can I play in today's game? I don't know. I don't know. You know, like, one of the hardest things for me was defending a pick and roll, but then the big man pops out to the three-point line. I remember that. Joe Devance, a young Joe Devance uh -huh. who played for Wellcoat back in the day, I was guarding him, and he kept, he kept, every time he set a pick, I'd try to find him underneath the basket, but then I'd look, he's all the way on the three-point line, right. knocking down the three-point shot. Azul's going to pick up that foul. Quickly. Two minutes and 30 seconds gone here in the third. Still a sizable advantage enjoyed here by Northport, though. Northport's doing a pretty good job of maintaining that lead, or protecting that lead, I should say. And you, know, you see the pace here. This is the pace that I like. Robert Bullock is, has a big part of that. He's just really controlling the pace of uh, Northport's attack. And a miss from point flank range. That has been the story here for Phoenix. It's got to be frustrating. Offensive rebound there by Jamie Malonzo. Taha kicks it out. Reich for three. Yes. Hey, look, you got to give credit to the rookie. Okay, he kept that ball alive. He, he got the offensive rebound, which resulted in a Troy Reich three-point shot. So you got a rookie getting the offensive board, and you got a rookie knocking out a three-point shot to extend Northport's lead. That's going to be another steal. Three and one break. No look pass. On Wubere. And Malonzo tips it through. And the, the lead is just really ballooned here. It is now 57 to 35. What a showing here. Watch it once again. Perfect passing. Reich left open for three. Knocks that one down. And on the break, on Wubere will miss, but Malone's are there for the putback. 57-35, this time out is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA.
Let's now take a look at the highlights here of Jamie Malonzo, who has made a seamless transition from the amateur ranks here to the Pro League in the PBA. And we're going to be showing you that, that in a little bit. And he is just really taking this lead by storm. Well, he brings another entity to uh, Northport, uh, Batang Pier. Uh, I talked about length, I talked about athleticism, but also more options for Coach Pido. He can play him at different positions, he can have him guard multiple positions, and he's not someone that seems to be looking for a shot. This is a guy that can hurt you in so many different ways. We've seen a couple of offensive putbacks already in this third quarter. Got to get away. Bollock's going to lose it. Manuel picks it up. Takes it in all the way himself. Coach Bidot didn't like what he saw in that last sequence, calling a quick timeout. Well, I think I would do the same thing, too. I mean, you're, the big guy from the other squad just takes it coast to coast and then scores with no uh, type of uh, defense. Now here are the highlights we promised you just a while ago. Jamie Malonzo with 8.6 rebounds and two blocks, doing it all for his squad. Well, I mean, he's, you see those uh, stats there. It's, it's just all across the board. Defense, rebounding, fast breaks with highlights such as this one right here, and then the multiple positions. We saw him knock down a three-point shot. But not, we saw him get offensive rebounds and putbacks. This looks like a rookie that can be someone interchangeable and someone that can do so many uh, different things out there on the basketball court. And you got to like the fact that he plays both ends. Yes, absolutely. And I like his energy. When he comes into the game, I notice that the complexion changes in terms of Northport's activity. Let's see if he can keep it up. Just the second game of his young, blossoming career. Kevin Ferrer has been a staple here in the league, knocking down his Three-point shots and coming up with tough defense as well. A foul is going to be called there. One of the things I'm going to say about this Northport squad is despite all the changes that have gone on with this uh, team, you know, of course, Christian Stan Hardinger was, who was a big part of their run um, a couple of conferences back before the PBA bubble. Um, you know, this team finished pretty, pretty deep into the playoffs, but the changes happened. But still, when you look at this team, this squad, there's a very, very deep lineup with a lot of talent there. A lot of talent and deep at different positions. Malonzo, calling out the play now. Trying to be a playmaker for his squad. That time gets denied. Taha with a putback. It was a nice, strong finish by Paulo Taha. He's got that big, strong body for a guard. Right. We'll head to the line for two more free throws. Wright has had a decent night scoring. Unfortunately, just can't hit anything from the outside. Fifty-nine, thirty-nine is our tally. Two more free throws here for Matthew. No problem with the first. Trying to stage some comeback here. Art of Phoenix, Super LPG. Troy Reich so far in this game has eight points. Along with uh, the other rookie, Jimmy Malonzo, with eight points as well. Onobere kicks it out, Malonzo. Onobere's got to take that one. They're giving it to him, and he makes it. He's got a lot of talent. There's a lot of things that he can do out there on the basketball court. One of them is knocking down three-point shots. He was able to find that mark. A 
Outside shot not going to work. The tap going to Onwubere. Again, defense and gathering the defensive rebounds, such an important asset in tonight's game for Northport. Magnolia, excuse me, Phoenix still trying to figure out their, their bearings here. Bullock hits a three. And things are going from bad to worse here for Phoenix. Yeah, this has to be nightmares. I don't, you know, obviously, this is not what they expected. Especially it being their second game. Here we go. Boom! Alonso can just sky. Reverse two-handed dunk off a breakaway. With the greatest of ease. It's like he hardly even had to jump. Right, thought about it. From the 15-foot line, won't get it to drop. Another rebound for Onubere. That's a solid pick there from Ferrer. And I go to Malonzo. Looking for another highlight play. Past the six-minute mark here. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Rios is going to check in here for Phoenix. And some changes also on the, on the side of Northport. I just think that Coach Topex Robinson is just trying to figure out what kind of spark that he can possibly get. He puts in Jansen Rios, who is an energy type of player, hopefully to get something out of him to spark the rest of his team. On the other side, Jerick Balanza will check in. Wow. And Bolick hits another three. He's got two in this and quarter the, alone. And this is the type of caliber player for those that don't know about Robert Bolick. I'm sure a lot of Filipinos know about Robert Bolick. But for those that don't know, that's what this guy is capable of doing. Okay, first, he took his time by setting up his teammates. Now he's starting to open up offensively. Great job reading the defense, reading the, the pick and roll defense there, realizing that he had more than enough space to get that three-point shot off. Will they finally get a three? No, they're now 8-0 out of 18. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I'm saying that because you don't expect that from Phoenix, but then again, you know, again, I'm just going to keep saying this over and over again. They're trying to find their bearings. They're trying to find their rhythm. Well, Phoenix has. They're shooting 9 out of 24 from three-point country. Now 9 out of 25. Off that miss from Balanza. Almost a steal. Active hands. That might have been another highlight play there. Manuel inside. Overshoots. Demusis knocks it through. It's a nice cleanup there by Nick Demusis, another rookie. Rookie for Phoenix. One who better? That's not going to count. Foul's going to be called on Rios. But check that. They give it to Vic Manuel. Under five minutes to be played here in the third period. This has to be a very frustrating game for Phoenix. You know, going from playing against Magnolia, which actually was a very close game. It was a very competitive game, even though shooting wasn't as uh, they wanted it to be. But let's take a look at this reverse off the one leg. Off of one leg, reverse dunk by Jamie Malonzo. Again, the athleticism and length. You see his teammates already know, Anthony. They already know. When he gets in the clear like that, something special is about to happen. And he's just really. That looked so easy, didn't it? Yeah, too easy. Hey, don't let me try that at 23 <laughs> years old, my rookie year. Garcia, running out to play now. It's it Perkins, Perkins. Rios in the outside. Back to Perkins, Perkins for three. That's gonna be an offensive foul, he kicked out. And he made contact with Onwu Bere. The referees are doing a pretty good job so far, even though we're early in this conference, of picking up those types of tricks there. You know, this could have worked if you were Reggie Miller back in the 90s. He was notorious for doing stuff like this and drawing the foul. But he's yeah. not going to kick that hard. No, not that, that high. high. No, I mean, he, he, hit it, <laughs> he hit it a lot well, a lot better. Another stoppage in play here. 
Jamie Malonzo looks like a cross between Rafi Rivas, even though he's not as tall as Rafi Rivas. But I'm saying that because of how active and athletic he is. Huh? The wiry frame, the attention to playing defense, getting rebounds. And then I would say Rob Wainwright, a young Rob Wainwright. Would that be good? That's a good combination. Good combination. Yeah. Missed that first free throw, though. Makes the adjustment in the second. Look at its scoreline. Not a scoreline that obviously Phoenix wants to be able to take a look at. For Northport, they're happy with 72-43. Perkins double clutching. Rios, the three. That is no chance. At yeah, that time, Phoenix actually ran a play. It's just, again, it's just they're just having a hard time putting the ball in the basket, whether it's inside or outside. Um, we talked about how we only, there's only a, a one a single round robin here, and if Phoenix loses to Northport, that's two in a row already with no wins in the winning column. You got a total of eleven a, games, it's, Ali. It's, it, it is. It, it, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna start to get back on the on track, get back on winning track, you know, as this conference progresses. But uh, it's just not something that you would expect from a team that performs so well in the PBA bubble. Despite that miss, it's still a 29-point advantage enjoyed here by Northport. They've got to get this down to at least a manageable deficit of maybe possibly 15 or even 20. It's definitely better than 29. Coach Pido is doing a good job of switching up defenses here. And what he deployed in the very first part of the game has been that matchup zone, that 2 3 zone. It seems to cause a lot of problems for Phoenix. Coach Topic's not happy there on the sidelines. As Malonso will take a seat. Paundo is going to check back in. He played sparingly in the first half. Referee's trying to sort things out. As you mentioned, they've done a heck of a job here to start things out. As the players have tried to find their rhythm, so far they've been spot on. Rios will head to the line. A little bit too strong that time. Phoenix is going to need every single opportunity they can get, especially these free throws. I think what they're trying to, I think what they're focusing on right now is just, all right, this, this quarter wasn't the best quarter for them. So they're going to try to regroup and use the fourth quarter to try to mount that comeback. But it's going to be very difficult because Northport's playing really well right now. I, I, I have to say, I really like the response by Northport from their very first game. Complete opposite, complete turnaround uh, from an offensive standpoint and also a defensive standpoint. But then just overall mental focus. Azul has checked back in here for Phoenix. Can he help? Door shot on him. Too strong on that baby hook. Rikas have really helped Northport control the boards. He has, yeah, he's done a really good job tonight. Bolik once again. Ferrer stops. Forced the issue there. And he gets a foul from the rookie. It's just a veteran move there baiting uh, Nick Demusis into a foul. But uh, you saw Phoenix trying so many different things defensively, 1-3-1 one, one zone, to, in hopes of uh, stalling and slowing down Northport's offense. Ferrer makes the first. It's now an even 30-point advantage. 
nobody expected a blowout score here. But Northport has been solid. You know, this is a team that can jump, you know, historically, this is a team that can really jump out on you. You know, if you're not careful, if you're not watching, I have to, you know, not to take anything away from Northport, but Phoenix, you know, can you say that they got off to a really good start? Did they come in here as focused as they should have been? And those are the questions that the coaching staff's gonna have to ask. If, if they end up losing this basketball. Ferrer gets away, short in that, re that layup there. Ball's gonna go down low and found him. That's a third year in GP. Third team foul here for Northport. Phoenix already in the penalty. Sydney checks back in. So far, Coach Pudo happy with the performance of his entire squad. And why not? They're up huge. Perkins, no. Demusis looks for the putback, gets denied. Azul overshoots. That's definitely a foul. Two big bodies colliding like that. Justin Chu was a big kid, six foot six. But I'm going to go back to Troy Reich, the rookie. Good defense right there. Like protecting the paint, which, you know, that's what you expect from a guy that's about six foot eight, six foot nine. Really smart kid as well. You know, I got a chance to sit down with him. Uh, actually, this is probably about a year ago when he was competing in three on three. And I could already tell that, you know, the, the IQ was there. Um, the skill set was there. This is a, a big man that likes to shoot and knock down three point shots, which is a prerequisite uh, in today's game for the bigs. Uh, but I said, you know what? He may not be as athletic or explosive, but uh, definitely he's going to be effective on whatever team decides to select him. Obviously, Northport found a lot of value in him. And so far, he's doing a pretty good job tonight. Ferrer makes that shot and it brings it back to another 30 point lead here for Northport. Under two minutes to play here in the third period. Still a lot of time. Demuses for three. In and out. Still to buy a three point bucket. This has got to be really. Phoenix. This has got to be really frustrating, Anthony, for Phoenix. I mean, you know, some of these looks are really good. And these, again, these are shots that they normally make. They're just not making them tonight. A minute, 28 seconds remain. Trying to get some production inside. And he fouls his way in, that's Perkins. So far, the larger part of the offense from Phoenix has really come from the big guys. It's come from the, the guys that play on the inside. Again, the 1-3-1 zone, it looks like. Phoenix deploying. Dopex going really deep into his bag of tricks as he brings in up all this. Ferrer's going to be fouled. Back to the free throw line here for Kevin. Kevin Ferrer, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's interesting. You know, when you get off to a good start offensively, things really start to fall into place for you. And you, you know what Kevin Ferrer brings. He brings tough defense. He brings his size. He brings his three-point shooting. But there's also a lot of other things that he can do. But um, because he got off to a, such a really great start in the first half, um, it gives him the confidence to try and do more things out there. But so far, Northport's doing an excellent job of keeping this Phoenix attack at bay. Actually, this is a combination of both. Phoenix having a hard time putting the ball in the basket, and Northport doing a pretty good job defensively. 77-47 is our tally. Another 30-point bubble put up here by Northport. Azul will bring it closer, and he will knock it down. R.J. Hazul, you rarely see him attack the basket that way. We normally know him for his three-point shooting. Again, the 1-3-1 zone, it looks like. 
Wally finds Ferrer. They go inside. On Mubera gets away. Overshoots. Some shots that On Mubera needs to make. He's had a few gimmies in this game so far. About two seconds difference from the shot clock and the game clock. Balance is going to pick up a second foul. It's going to be the fourth team foul for Northport here. Phoenix needs to score here. Chua hits. Chua wide open for that uh, free throw line extended jump shot there. Bolik steps back and hits. He's done everything. He's, he's for his done life. everything. He's done everything. And that was just a nice shot right there. Using the, the pick and roll screen, being able to give himself some space to knock down that jump shot mid range. And let's watch. Kevin Ferrer in action. He's got 18 points to go with seven rebounds. He can do it all for his squad as well. Getting from the outside, knocking down that three. Three for seven from the three point line, five for six from the free throws. And then just putting himself in the proper position to get drop passes or passes like that by Robert Bolick. Northport, Batang Pierre looking good here. Third quarter ends with Northport up 79 to 51. Gustavoban and Kakaibang viewing experience of PBA. Register to join the PBA virtual fan experience and become a Bida fan. Dahil dito sa PBA, tayo ang Bida. Registration link will be posted a day before each PBA game day on PBA, PBA Rush, TV5, and One Sports Facebook page. Welcome back to the 2021 Honda PBA Philippine Cup brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Fourth quarter action, Northport up against Phoenix. Anthony Suntai doing the coverage here with Ali Peak. And so far, so good here for Northport Batang Pierre. Looking to notch their first victory here at this conference. Perkins for three. Yes, finally, they got a three point shot. You gotta take a look at that percentage now. <laughs> <laughs> it still might not help that much, Ali. It'll help though. But again, the fourth quarter is probably what the coaching staff of Phoenix really focused in on. Try to make this, especially the first five minutes, as strong as they could possibly make it to try to make this run. Well, Ono Berra answers that three from Perkins, and we're right back where we started. And this is a crazy score, 82 to 54. Look at the defense of Wright moving his feet on the outside up against Perkins. Stepping on the baseline, that's going to be a turnover. And the Polis uh, just uh, ran out of space there and probably didn't realize exactly where he was. You can see Bolik just controlling the pace once again. Now he slowed things down. Malonzo for three. No. The tap's going to land to Bolik, and again he says, let's set things up. He's just in such control of this ball game. Launches a three and hits. You 
just don't see him rushing anything. He's just, I mean, he's slowly bringing the ball up the court, you know, and psychologically, that relaxes the rest of your teammates. And again, that's what he brings. It's just the, the leadership aspect is off the charts. Azul tries to answer and does. So we're seeing a back and forth, and what we've seen so far over the last couple of minutes is just uh, baskets being exchanged here. But again, Robert Bullock working the offense. It seems like he can do just about everything he sets his mind to. Reich for three. Yes. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and check Reich's percentage from that three-point line because uh, I don't think he's missed a shot so far, Anthony. I'm going to go check. At worst, he's missed one. Perkins pulls it back. Hits another three. Now the three is starting to fall here for Phoenix. But they need some stops, Ali. They got to get stops. Almost three minutes gone here in the fourth and final period. Right for another three. Yes! Wow, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. It's now suddenly a shootout at the OK Corral. Nobody can miss from three. Getting away inside is RR Garcia. So far, Troy Reich's only missed one three-point shot, so you're right. It's two for three right now from uh, the three-point range. Here's Bolik. Finds the open man. Reich, another three! Bang! <laughs> crazy. Again, orchestrated by Robert Bolick, but Troy Reich has been very impressive in his second game in the PBA. And again, another three. That's the third for Perkins here in the fourth. But just going back to what you said, the point that you made, they can't keep exchanging buckets here. They got to find a way to make stops. Right. Oh, why not? Oh! Whoa. 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 Another gosh. one. What's going on here? Nobody can miss from three. At least here in the fourth. Did they change the rings? Right before the start of the fourth? Can't understand it. Steal here. Bowling. Three on two break. They go to Deligas. Short. That used to be one of his main targets. At oh, the San pass was straight to the opponent. Bollick's gonna finish here. Robert uh, I'll tell you, Robert Bollick looks great. He looks really, really good, guys. He's huffing and puffing. He's doing everything for his squad. But he's gotta be pleased. His team is up, and they're up big. As he talks to his teammates. It's 99.65 for Northport. This timeout is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Watch Robert Bollick once again. That was the previous game. Up against Miralco. Look at those numbers. 11 points, 9 rebounds, and orchestrating really well. And now, picking up where he left off in that first game. This time, knocking down threes. Finding his open teammates. And look at those numbers once again. 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 10 assists close to a triple-double. But just his shooting percentage. So efficient and so effective the way he runs the offense. 7 for 11, 65% from the field, Anthony. And then his three-point shooting, he's only missed one three-point shot this whole night. 75% from the three-point mark. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 99-65 is our tally. Northport looking well underway to notching their first victory here at this conference. This is a great response by Northport. Again, if you're Pido Horencio, if you're Coach Pido Horencio, you have to be pleased tonight. 
Seven minutes, 39 seconds remain here in the fourth and final period. Phoenix looking a little bit better here. But the problem is they've allowed Northport to just put up such a huge lead. Well, they're exchanging baskets. The last sequence, they turned the ball over. But, um, you know, yes, they're knocking down more shots, but it's not in any type of offensive flow. A lot of this stuff is one-on-one. -on -one. Just like what you said. Defense there. Once again, Manuel trying to take matters into his own hands. Reich has been a solid addition here. Manuel gets away. One of the few bright spots here for Phoenix in their second match. Surprise, Reich didn't take that one. Malonzo gets away! This time in the post. We saw him knock down some jump shots. We saw him get on the break. This time we see him post up Matthew Wright. They're going to clear it. Now they say, let's wait. Time's on their side. They bet they'll build a real hefty lead already. So far, Jamie Malonzo, 11 points. One of the few misses here for Robert Bullock. He's got to be careful. Well, you've got to love his energy, but sometimes he's got to know when to start to taper things off. We're going to go back to Jamie Malonzo here. I talked about 11 points, seven rebounds, Anthony, and then four block shots. Four block shots. Everybody contributing to this win here. Matthew Wright crashing the boards, getting another two. A nice tip in there by Matthew Wright. Close to the midway point of the fourth. Here's Pereira once again. Pereira's going to lose it. Got to give up that foul. Now they're going to have to review this one. Well, it didn't look like he went for the ball there. It looked like he just bear hugged him. But from a coaching standpoint, you know, you've got to love what Reich did there. Not wanting to give anything easy. No, that's, not, that's, not what you, that's, what you, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You know, if you think about what, uh, what Big Manuel did to Jamie Malonzo in the first half, um, the question here is, did, does he go for the basketball? Yeah, it looks like, well, it's questionable. Five minutes, 51 seconds remain here. But what I like about these two pieces is they make their presence felt on both ends of the court. We saw block shots by Troy Wright. We saw, I just mentioned the block shots by Jamie Malonzo. These guys can really compliment the big fella once he gets back. Now, they're already complimenting Robert Bullock and Kevin Ferrer, right? But imagine when Greg Slaughter gets back into the lineup and then they start to create some sort of cohesiveness. Um, it's going to look pretty scary. And I've always believed that Northport has always been a scary team to face, especially if they make it into the playoffs. Right, picks that one up. Still a 31-point advantage. Kind of a tough pass there by the rookie. Coach Pido Horencio is going to call for time. I think he wants to see his team come up with a strong finish here in the fourth.
look at some of the highlights here of... Right now, let's take a look at the highlights here of Vic Manuel. He's at 22 points, four rebounds, three blocks. Pretty good percentage as well. Very good percentage. He's always had a great shooting percentage, nine for 17 there. Um, pretty solid game for Vic Manuel. We have to say that because it's really one of the only bright things to talk about as far as Phoenix is concerned. They've had a really, really rough night. Tough night. The Philippines' chances of getting its first ever gold medal is stronger than ever. Share the love for Team Philippines as we count down to Tokyo 2020. Watch the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, from July 23 to August 8th on Signal, TV5, One Sports, One Sports Plus, Signal Play, PLDT, and Smart. Hashtag See Us Stronger. A while ago, you saw the team standings, and so far, so good for the start. A while ago, you saw. 13 points for Jamie Malonzo, again, crashing the offensive glass. Pretty good starts for Meralco and Raynor Shine, and looking to get into the win column here is Northport. They might be well on their way. Hazul for three, yes. Nice, nice offensive uh, movement there. RJ Hazul was able to spot up, take his time, find his balance, and knock down that three-point shot. Well, Phoenix Ali has now found their range from three, but maybe a little bit too late. Maybe a little bit too late. Wallach with the spin, almost lost it. And it lands in the hands of Kevin Ferrer. Kevin Ferrer being in the right place at the right time. Again, to clean up. That was the, that's the second time in a row already that we've seen Northport crash the boards or uh, put themselves in the proper position to be able to score. Well, he's going to pick up his first personal, only the first team foul, but now the second team foul of Northport. Phoenix still to come up with a foul here. That has been the only positive here so far. Manuel gets away. 24 points for Big Manuel. Approaching the four minute mark. It's 105 75 Northport. They had a big blast in the middle part of the second period and they've never looked back. Taha, yes. Again, that's another assist by Robert Bolick. Nice teardrop shot by Pablo Taha. Right, cross court. Azul finds Melesho. Melesho short. I'm gonna reset the offense here. Hazul, no. Tip's not going to work for right. Here's Bolik once again. Bolik felt he had the advantage there against a much smaller Melesho. He looks really good, Anthony. Really good. You know, I mean, I thought he looked pretty good considering in that first game, but. You know, you want to talk about someone being back to form and how long it will take him to get back to form. Well, he's there. He's there. Too short on that shot. Taha will lose it. Here's Malesho. Manuel. Dipsy to move. Under three to play. But the lead is still at 30. Lackadaisical pass there from Alonso to Reich. Azul, a little bit off to the left. Now Ferrer says, let's just walk it up, use some clock. Coach Pido wanted to call time, and he actually looked over. It's actually a good timeout. So we're getting a little sloppy there in terms of taking care of the basketball. But I like the fact that he looked over to Topex Robertson, apologized for this timeout. He says, 
I gotta talk to my boys. We'll be back after this. Coming up next, we've got Alaska up against Magnolia as we continue our coverage of the Philippine Cup. But before anything else, birthday greetings going out to Ayana, the daughter of our good friend Eric Arejola. Ayana, watching us right now, thank you very much for, of course, supporting the PBA and we hope you have a very happy birthday. They got to be very happy right now, the Arriola Absolutely, family, because it is 107-77 Northport. Just about ready to notch their first victory here in the conference. And the hit from the outside. That's adding insult to injury here. And this time by Lorde. They're quite deep talking yeah. about Northport. Because Very deep. Lorde did so well in the bubble last year. He actually played a lot more in the very first game as opposed to tonight. But um, just going, the reinforcing what you said. This is a very, very deep and talented team. And it looks like they've gotten younger as well. So again, a lot for Coach Pido to work with. And I go inside, phone though. And I get to work. Drop step. Gets away for two inside. Some nice drop step baseline by Faundo off the glass. Try and get some more points. Muscle man won't get at the drop. Rolling out the play. 70 seconds remain here. And the foul will be called on Vic Manuel. I think he did that just to slow the game down yeah. because it uh, looks like he's breathing a little heavy there. Well, he's essentially been a one man he's wrecking crew. Pretty much, pretty much. He's been the only person really uh, consistently scoring. Of course, Perkins was able to knock down some shots. Azul, but not on a consistent level. 2-3 zone implemented now by Phoenix. And Lorde for three, yes! So you got another three-point shooter coming in towards the end of the ball game, making his presence felt. He's got six points now, Lorde. RR Garcia will lose it. Just another turnover there, and really no movement on the offensive side for Phoenix, uh, just, just take a look at these stats here. Robert Bullock Jr., he's back, guys. He's back. All right, no question. 20 points, 7 rebounds, 11 assists, 7 for 14 from the field. But just going back to Magnolia, Anthony, I mean, they, I, I keep saying, Mag, what about, why do I keep saying Magnolia? Phoenix, Phoenix. We're going to have them a little We're, bit later. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking a lot about them right now. But uh, with Phoenix, um, it's got to be frustrating. You know, I'm, I'm frustrated watching them, so I, I can only imagine how they're feeling right now. They're just Their offense is just not clicking. And, you know, a lot of that frustration can come because in the beginning, we talked about how they were really working their offense pretty well. They're getting really good looks. And shots that would normally fall, they weren't falling. That can lead to a little bit of frustration. Um, especially when you're not making stops on the other end. There's going to be another foul. We're going to keep it here on this end of the floor. Oh, Foul's going to be called there in Napoles. Oh, Renzo Subido is also checked in here for the squad of Northport.
Just picking up on that point you were mentioning, they do have a deep lineup looking at. It's deep, right? <laughs> these players that they have, and we haven't even seen Greg Slaughter yet. Can you imagine if Sean Anthony was out there? That's another guy who didn't see action, and they still went away winning this one by a mile. Melesho, no. Gray's going to pick it up. And now he's just going to dribble this away. This is a great win by Northport. You know, a great response, a great answer to their performance in the very first game. And um, a lot of it had to do with Robert Bullock. Northport's going to win this one. 115 to 79 over the Phoenix Super LPG Fuel Masters. When we come back, we're gonna have the post game. But we'll stick around first, talk things over a little bit. Here is our best player of the ball game, and you saw him a while ago. Our next level player of the game, Robert Pollock. Is brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. Exceptional numbers, almost a triple double, Ali. Almost a triple double, but he did everything. Even when he wasn't scoring in the very beginning of the game, with the first half of the basketball game, he was orchestrating. He was making the right decisions out there, uh, really leading this team. That is our final score, 115 to 79. We'll take a break, and we'll be back for a whole lot more when we come back. Magandang gabi, kasama natin ngayon si Robert Bolick, ang best player of the game, at si Northport head coach Pidoha Renzo. Robert, great bounce back win against a very tough team. Ano yung mindset nyo going into this game? Um, uh, defense, uh, sabi nga ni coach Pido, uh, hindi namin kaya pag offense to offense lang eh. So, yun. Um, Nag-usap kami, tas focus na lang kami, pas couple of practices namin, puro kami depensa talaga. Yung offense ka namin, hindi nga namin natrabaho eh. Talagang nag-focus na lang kami ni coach. Tsaka buong team, coaching staff ni coach, lahat. Uh, sa defense talaga. So, nagkita naman ngayon, di ba? So, grabe yung depensa namin. So, sana tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Ay, tuloy -tuloy. Robert, second game, second game pa lang from an injury. Ano yung nararamdaman mo ngayon? Um, uh, ano naman, uh, okay naman. Uh, yun na nga, um, laking pasasalamat. Kanila coach. Binigyan ako ng mataas na pahinga. Hindi ako naglaro sa bubble. Binigyan nila ako ng chance na mag-recover matagal. So, yun. Uh, Nag-pay off naman ngayong uh, season na to. Coach Pido, your thoughts on the game po? Uh, actually, ano eh. No? Uh, unang mindset uh, going to the season na asama na record namin sa bubble. And then, may mga new guys na dumating. Uh, sabi ko lang sa kanila, uh, with this composition, kahit pa paano, magiging competitive tayo. And then, sa dung disappointment yung first game namin, we set the record for the highest, ano, yung lowest scoring yata sa PBA at at the same time sa percentage. No? So, ang ginawa na lang namin, ah, uh, uh, we, we fix one thing. Defense na lang. Sabi ko, ayusin natin yung defense natin. Uh, actually, we had a bull session. Uh, kinausap ko yung mga players. Uh, and then, nag-concentrate kami sa defense. Uh, we set our rules on defense. And then, sabi ko sa kanila, on defense, if we make stuff, darating yung offense natin. Then, we can uh, get our flow on offense. So, it all started on defense. And then, the players are so responsive, no? 
uh, nakita naman natin. And then, uh, for me, this will be our game. No? More on defense. And then, ang offense, darating na lang. No? Ang flow, darating na lang. Coach, update on Greg Slaughter. Okay. Uh, in our first game, si Greg, uh, siya nagsabi na ayaw niya maglaro. But he want to suit up just to cheer, cheer the players. No? Siya talaga nagsabi na ayaw niya muna maglaro. Sabi ko, okay. Tapos ngayon, sabi niya, uh, he's not fit to play. Sabi ko, okay, just wear civilian clothes. And then si Sean Anthony may injury. Pero uh, I think they'll be ready next, this next game, sa Sunday. Uh, si, si Greg ang nag-request sa amin na wag muna siyang maglaro. Kasi tuloy, para mga tao, akala hindi namin ginamit siya. Eh, no? De, siya talaga nag-request na wag daw muna maglaro. Kasi it's not yet fit to play. Pero uh, sumabay naman siya sa practice na nag-walk through siya. Uh, which is helpful para sa kanya, helpful para sa team. Okay. Uh, Robert? Robert, uh, nakapansin namin nung off-season, marami kang mga pinost sa Facebook mo, yung mga parang game winner mo sa practice. Eh, no? Ganun na ba mentality mo for entering this season na talagang gusto mo talagang umagad, to take charge para sa Northport this season? Um... Uh, Siyempre kasi ano eh, uh, yun nga, uh, point guard ako. And uh, yun nga, wala ako sa bubble. Um, grabe yung pinaghirap ng, ng team namin, sila coach. At uh, binigyan ako ng opportunity para mag-recover ng matagal. So I think, uh, balik na sa akin to sa kanila. So inalaga ko yung sarili ko, uh, pakondisyon ako para pagdating sa season, um, may tulong ko naman yung, yung hindi ko na itulong sa kanila sa bubble. So, Binabalik ko lang sa kanila, Coach, yung um, tiwala na binigay nila sa akin na binigyan ako ng mataas na pahinga. Coach, yung potential ng team mo mukhang ano eh, uh, na nakita rito sa game na to. Uh, maganda yung mga tao nyo eh, like Troy Reich and uh, Malonso. Ano masaya mo sa team mo? Kaya kami ano eh, kaya nga ano eh, uh, uh, yung potential, kailangan may result. So, we invested on defense muna, no? And sinet namin yung defense and then yung offense, darating. Pagdating ng offense, magiging madali lahat. And then, everybody will contribute. Everybody will do their share. And then, Robert, uh, I give him an advice na he should control the game. Uh, it's up to him, no? I, I give him all the freedom na discarding niya no pero on defense is our all alcohol no call namin yun sabi ko tapos yung rotation namin players rotation medyo tinibayan na namin uh, nagset kami ng rotation para yung mga players they're all ready to play na alam nila they were coming in and then their only job is to help the team do their share no Uh, this win is for the management. This win is for the PBA. This win is for the Northport fans, no? Uh, who keep on supporting us uh, through Facebook, through ano man. Misa uh, na babash tayo, pero okay lang yon. Okay, magilala sa nai na tayron, no? As long as this team, we will prepare this team, especially this season. I'm so excited. I'm not excited about our team. I'm excited because PBA started already. No, maraming gusto makapanood ng PBA. And then, at the same time, yung mga player, gustong makita ng mga tao. Kaya, uh, sa mga fans ng PBA, no, yung mga basher sa PBA, alam ko, nanunood din naman kayo ng PBA. Okay, mahalin na lang natin PBA because this is the number one sport sa Pilipinas. Suportahan natin itong PBA. Okay? Thank you. May katanungan po si Mr. Ray Hoble. Mr. Ray Hoble? Sorry. Hi, Coach. Congratulations. Hi, Ray. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh -huh. Hi. 
Coach, uh, ano yung kulang, uh, tatanong yung kulang, no, prior to sa first, sa first game nyo, nag- nagkaroon daw kayo ng problema in terms of preparations dahil nahihirapan kayo sa scheduling sa ensayo sa Batangas, no, sa schedule sa venue. Uh, and then, nag- ano yan, eh, nag-reflect sa first game nyo na parang medyo nangangapa kayo. No? Pero pagbalik dito ng ano, after a few more days, nag-double time pa kayo ng, ano, ng ensayo dito sa Manila. Kaya medyo naging maganda yung preparations nyo ngayon. Okay. Uh, Ray, uh, after our first game, nag-break lang kami ng mga players. Pero kami mga coaches, nag-usap-usap na. And then, actually, we, we were scolded by our bosses. No? Kasi, sama eh. I think that's the ugliest game in the PBA. By far, no? At sama talaga ng laro. Shooting, defense, at sama. And then, we note namin our defense talaga. Yun muna, una namin trinabaho. We're spending like three to four hours on the last three days before our game against Phoenix. Talagang three or four hours, nag-extend kami ng practice. Yung mga player nga, medyo baba na mga tuka eh. Pero sabi ko, we have to sacrifice. Sabi ko, matagal na rin naman kayo nagbakasyon eh. Hindi ngayon tayo magtrabaho. Uh, nagbakasyon ng PBA for seven months or eight months bago tayo matuloy ulit. Sabi ko, this is the time na siguro trabawin na natin ang gusto. Kasi nandito na tayo sa Manila eh. We're back in Manila. Wala nang biyay mga two hours para mag-practice. Wala na yung, wala na yung pagdating doon, hindi pala pwede yung gym round out. Tapos, alam mo yun, pagod ang players. At at the same time, we're happy. No, we're happy. All the sacrifices that we're doing. Dito, lalo ang PBA. Uh, we love PBA. Let's support. Let's keep, keep supporting PBA. Okay? Right now, we're going to show you the game highlights brought to you by Honda, the official motorcycle of the PBA. It is a very slow start for both these squads here in the first period, Ali. But what we did eventually see is that Northport's execution started to really pay dividends uh, in that first quarter uh, with shots like that by Jamie Malazzo. Well, this guy has been a one-man wrecking crew. So hard to stop with those broad shoulders just barreling his way through everybody. 22-18 was our first quarter score. That was the only time it was close, Ali. That was pretty much the only time. Then all <laughs> of a sudden, things really started to open up with shots like that. Kevin Ferrer knocking down uh, three points. He had a really good night tonight, 20 points to be exact. And of course, Jamie Malonzo, uh highlight in that first half. Uh, running the break, dish off by Robert Bullock. One of 11 assists from Robert Bullock. And again, we see the same thing. Transition, open transition, um, seemed to be a, a huge weapon for Northport in the first half. Here at the game, a 19-point lead here for Northport, and things would start to go from bad to worse for the Phoenix Super LPG. And there's just really one thing that seemed to be working the whole night for uh, Phoenix, and that was this man, the muscle man, uh, Vic Manuel, but then we see more highlights by this young man, Jamie Malonzo, this time with the reverse dunk, the breakaway, all because of the defense, the solid defense by Northport, which created turnovers that equated the buckets. Well, what can you say about that man? He controlled the pace, he controlled the tempo, he hit the open shots, and at the same time, he got his teammates involved close to a triple-double today for Robert Bolling. That's a huge reason as to why Northport was able to extend that lead going into the fourth quarter. This man, Troy Wright, another rookie, made his presence felt, knocking down three-point shot after three-point shot. And in the break once again, Robert Bolling, adding insult to injury there right before he was replaced. Look at him. Scampering for those loose balls, finding Kevin Ferrer there. And we saw a lot of those scrambles that equaled points. Again, just the all-around effort of Northport tonight. As you take a look at the stats, it is 115 to 79. That is our final tally here in our first game this Wednesday. Well, now we're going to give you our next game in just a bit. Don't go away. It'll be Alaska up against Magnolia. And behalf of my partner, Ali Peak. Anthony Stye here, thanks, saying thanks for joining us, everybody. 
a little bit later on. We got another game coming up. Take care, everybody. God bless.